Happy Sunday, happy Sunday, happy Sunday. I was sitting here thinking like, what is today? But happy Sunday. I'm glad to talk to you guys. Thank you guys for your patience. Um, I am, I'm going to be teaching something that is a highly, highly, highly requested. As a matter of fact, one of you reached out to me. I think maybe two people reached out to me last week. Um, send me um, submissions via my website. I do read those submissions, guys, but send me submissions via my website asking how to test the spirit. And this is something that I get quite a bit is people saying, okay, Tiffany, I hear you talking about demons. I hear you talking about this. And I hear you talking about, you know, like typically one of the pointers is to test the spirit. And so again, a lot of people are stumped as it relates to how to test the spirit, how to test the spirit. So I want to make sure that I give you guys some sound doctrine. Uh, I want to show you how to test the spirit. And I believe that this is going to be good. It's going to be revelatory. It's going to be powerful. Um, just a few shout outs. Uh, so it's the V how are you by the spirit in christ how are you brother andre how are you miss and whitney how are you sister latonya how are you sister shan how are you i bless god for you guys like i said this is a highly requested uh teaching a lot of people you know because we know the bible says um that we are to test the spirit and people always say well well how do you do that you know what do i do you know because i, I meet people and uh, I, you know, I'm praying about it, but how do I test the spirit and a person? And I believe again, that this is going to be revelatory. I believe that it's going to kind of bring uh, the scriptures to life for you. The, the, the word of God is living. Let me say that the word of God is alive. And whenever you start putting, shall these bones live? It's, you know, it, it just reminds me of uh, when the flesh comes back onto the bones. It's like when you start bringing the word together, when the body starts coming together, it comes alive. And so that's what God wants us to do. Brother Andre, you're awesome. Thank you. Also, what God wants us to do is just to, to study the word. And what you will find is that the word confirms himself, not himself. Uh, the word confirms himself and you will come to see, you know, what it means. Okay. So do me a favor. Be sure to like and share. I'm going to give you a little bit of small talk before I get into this month of September. I will be shooting another short film slash music video i'm really excited about this i'm really excited it's going to be awesome it's going to be revelatory it's going to be powerful better than powerful amazing um so definitely for those of you who have the spirit of god uh keep us in prayer uh cover us in prayer and one two i'm gonna say this um it's going to cost me in the upwards between 10 to 15 g to 10 to fifteen thousand dollars to shoot this film. Um, and that's, you know, with the shooting and paying all the people and all that other stuff. So I'm not going to, ha I'm not going to be proud. I'm going to say, if you'd like to sew into that production, I'm going to be talking about that uh, from here on out all the way up to September. I'm going to give you the opportunity to sew. Um, if you happen to be one of those people that get mad when people say so, I don't care because at the end of the day, I, I love you guys, but Yes, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be powerful, and I don't want to cut it short. Uh, but at the same time, if you want to sow into that production, you can. Make sure you list, you know, make sure if you do sow a seed that you say music video, and we will list you as one, one of the sponsors or what have you. Um, I wanted to thank you, Big M. God bless you. I wanted to make sure uh, that I say that because, you know, like I said, I'm not one of those people that I'm not going to, I'm not going to go under people's uh wrong for relationship with money and be like i don't say anything and they just like okay good because i'll be no that's your own guilt and you know that's your own guilt that's dealing with you okay i'm shooting that i'm also gonna say this uh i will be posting up starting the next video whichever whenever i record it i will be posting up the link to for those of you who are in the georgia area who would like to audition uh, maybe if you're an actor, actresses, if you're a makeup artist, if you happen to be good with set design, anything that you're pretty good at, I will be posting up information uh, for you to audition or maybe even volunteer. Of course, I'm going to be looking at the volunteers a whole lot more than I'm looking at the folks that, that, that got the, you know, the big request or what have you. Because, like I said, it is going to be a relatively... Um, uh, post up the cash app post up the cash app she posted up the paypal me and then um there's a cash app too but i'm going to be looking um at people because my goal is i want to make sure that i pay at least i want to make sure i pay all the actors and actresses at least the main ones uh and at, at, at minimum the main ones right 
Uh, but yeah, it is relatively expensive because I'm going to be working with anywhere in the upwards of 250 to 100 people. <laughs> and then I'm going to be having to rent like four uh, Airbnb properties. Sister Felicia, God bless you. Thank you, sis. I'm going to be um, renting four Airbnb properties. Um, and so I'm really excited about that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sister Carla, God bless you. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, it's going to be amazing. The last video I shot, when I tell you the spirit of God showed up on set, it was so amazing. It was, it was powerful. You had to be there. It was, we had fun. We laughed. It, it was just amazing. It was amazing. Uh, healing broke out there. I believe at this particular one, we're going to have healing miracles, deliverance, all of that stuff, stuff like that break out does break out on set stuff like that does break out on set. But with that being said, I love me some you. Let's go ahead and jump into this lesson. Like I said, I get this all the time. People always ask me, how do you test the spirit? Because the Bible tells us to test the spirit. So I'm going to jump into some pointers and then I'm going to kind of navigate away from the pointers um, so I can build a little bit. Um, so first and foremost, the Bible tells us, and I think we're going to start. Give me a second. I should have had this pulled up. Give me a second, second, second. Give me a second. I actually did pull them pull this up at one point. All right. I think it's Matthew. Yep. Matthew 7 16. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not forth good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Whereby, wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. This is the scripture. You shall know them by their fruits. Now, um, one of the things that the Bible likens us to, and I want to like us liken us to, is we're all trees. We're all individual trees. But you do know that there are different harvests. So for example, there is a season where you may come across an apple tree and you don't necessarily know that it's an apple tree uh, because it's not bearing any fruit. Now, it doesn't mean that the fruit tree is not, you know, doing what it's supposed to do. It could be young or it may not be necessarily the season to bear fruit. I lived in Germany. Um, and I remember uh, when I was living in Germany, when I lived in Eberbach, uh, Germany, I lived in a, um, a mountainous, a mountain, mountainous region. I guess that's how you say it. But I remember that we were surrounded by um, apple trees. I used to joke all the time because I was still kind of like young in the faith. I used to joke all the time about these people better be happy that like I ain't have none of my folks up there with me. And I was thinking about uh, some of the folks that I, you know, grew up around who wasn't all that integral uh, because I didn't understand like they had apple trees and the apple trees were out there just bearing fruit. Nobody was out there. You know, you can see them in people's yard, but a lot, you didn't see too many people out there. Sister Latricia, God bless you. Thank you, sis. You didn't see how many, uh, too many people out there collecting the fruit. And I'm like, they just letting this stuff fall to the ground or what have you. But the thing about it is they had just gotten accustomed to them, right? They got familiar with them. And so the trees were just bearing fruit. The, tr the fruit would hit the ground and they rot out or what have you. They clean it up or what have you. But I was like, man, I know a lot of folks from America that I bring down here. And, you know, I was just talking about some not so integral people i'm like we'd be in their yard like excuse me i'm so sorry i'm so sorry or what have you but you will know them by their fruit now I'm, I'm saying that to say that if you come across an apple tree that's not bearing fruit if it had the ability to speak it could tell you that i'm an orange tree and in that moment you don't know whether or not it's telling the truth or not unless you happen to be you know somebody that has been you know working with fruit for a while you're not going to know the difference, right? You'll be sitting up there saying, well, I met this guy. He told me he's an orange tree. But realistically speaking, he may be an apple tree. So one of the things that you have to have is patience. You have to have patience. And one of the things, I need you to hit me when I say this, and I know I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself, but it, it has to be said. You can't build a soul tie with a person, or you should not build a soul tie with a person. Let me say it that way until you come to decide or until you come to see what type of fruit tree they are. 
you should not create okay this is one of the problems that we have one of the habits that we have one of the issues that we have is that we meet somebody right and you know we can talk romantic relationships we can talk platonic relationship we do this with our friends we meet somebody and they one thing about us and i, I said this to a sister in christ the other day one thing about us is that we always find an area of our lives that we are similar in that's just our human nature because can two walk together except they be agreed and i want you to imagine yourself as a spinning rat and there are so many different sides to you every side of you represents a facet of who you are it represents a trait a characteristic or a or your fallen nature one thing that happens is when people come up to you i want you to imagine everybody is you know like that they you know they're multifaceted you know they got they're multi-dimensional when people come up to you i want you to imagine what they do is they kind of spin around the side of you that is more like than the side of you that they can relate to the side of them the side of you that they're able to walk with again amos 3 3 can two walk together except they be agreed do me a favor guys like and share like and share surprise at the low numbers but do me a favor be sure to like and be sure to share but people will spin around the side of you that they are mo in most agreement with right um that's one of the ways you can test the fruit for example what do you feel like doing whenever a person comes around and so and it, this is kind of deviating from what i was really saying what i was just saying but what do you feel like do i every time this person come around do i always feel the need to gossip you know why if i feel the need to gossip every time they come around it's because when they spin me around that's the side of them that's the side of me that they feel in agreement with and if they find that side of me it simply means that i need to crucify that area of my life it simply means that that particular area of my life i have not allowed to die thank you sister uh, nancy god bless you i have not allowed that area of my life to die so you can always pay attention to uh the side of you that people tend to spin around but going back to romantic or even platonic whenever a person whenever you come in contact with people and I, I matter of fact i think i've said this i've had more conversations this week than i've had any other week um i feel like i've been counseling quite a bit this week but um when it, you come in contact with people one thing about us as humans is that we have a tendency like if i if i start talking to a guy i'm looking for similarities same thing he's gonna do you're gonna do it by instinct by default we're looking for similarities so if i tell him for example i'm a workaholic you know i sit back and i'm always working i'm always designing i'm always creating something and that happens to not be him that's not his nature he he says you know i believe in rest relaxation uh, i'm not that proud i don't believe in working myself to death and i don't believe in all that then we can't walk together in that area because we're not agreed and it's because we can't walk together and because we're not agreed in that area more than likely we're not going to have conversations uh, too much in that area now if i continue on in a relationship with him then we're probably going to fight in that area at some point we're probably going to fight in that area at some point we're going to fight because let's say if i married him he happens to be you know the, the folding of the hands social your poverty come up on me this he lazy you know he likes to chill and he call it relaxing i'm not about to work myself to death for anybody and what have you so he call it relaxing he chilling or what have you then he gets frustrated with me because I'm up in there and I'm like, I got to create this thing. I got to shoot this video. I got to write this script up. I got to go have a meeting with this person. I got to go do this. I got I got all of this stuff to do. In that, what if I was patient, I would see the type of fruit tree that he is. I would see the type of fruit tree that he is. Right. And the people put on masks, but that's what patience is for. Because the problem that we have nowadays, again, is what we do is we spin people around we find the area that we like then catch this we sold to ourselves to that area we find the area we spin them around like i got this little light here i'll be spinning this thing you can't see it but here it is we spin them around till we find the side of them that we actually like that we can walk with and once we find that side of them that we actually like we then sold to ourselves to them and i always say this you guys have heard me say this a thousand times i'm going to say it probably a thousand more times we always marry or partner with our fantasies of a man but we divorce his reality we fantasize we are fantasizing people we are people we're dreamers we like to sit back and come in contact with a person we like to imagine him being everything that we've ever wanted in a man he's going to be so loving and so nurturing so attentive i'm going to be his best friend he's going to be my best friend we like to imagine that nevertheless okay 
Praise the Lord. But we like to imagine that the person is everything that we want in, in a relationship. Or whatever. So I'm not going to go there. But you have to test the spirit. One of the ways to test the spirit is patience. You have to be patient. That means that if I meet somebody, if it's a man, if it's, if it's a female, if it's a girl that's trying to be my friend, I have to be patient. That means even though she may be trying to rush and she trying to run, she's like, oh my, OMG, I feel like we besties or oh, what have you. Yeah, no, I got to wait first. And you got to wait too, sis. You know, both of us have to wait. We got to test the spirit in each other and catch this because we're multidimensional. We got to find out which sides of us can be friends and which sides of us are not necessarily going to be able to walk together. So for example, I happen to be a person, I believe in paying, I don't believe in going into debt for anything. If you can't afford it, it's not your season for it. I may come across a female that she doesn't believe that, you know, she just goes out, she finances everything. Um, you know, she likes to buy stuff and she go, girl, I just got myself a new car. Praise God, girl, congratulations. Yeah, the car note is just $300 a month. Well, we can't be friends in that area. We're not going to be, now I can minister to her in that area. But we're not going to walk together in that area because in that particular area, I'm going to be looking at her like, as soon as she said 300 a month, I'm going to say, sis, be anxious for nothing that is in your word. The Bible says, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. Come on, sis, let's be realistic. Come on, sis. No, let's not. Let, 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 let's be, yeah, let's be realistic. Realistically speaking, if you couldn't afford a car, you should, you should have caught the bus. Well, Tiffany, let's not talk about that right now. Okay. So now you can see we can't be friends in that area. We're not necessarily enemies. But we oppose, we are in opposition of one another, meaning that anytime we have a conversation in that area, then we have strong disagreements. This is a little bit of wisdom before I get back into the notes. A little bit of wisdom for you. You have to learn that you are a multidimensional creature. You are multifaceted. Like I said, you are like a spinning rat. And you have to be mindful of, you know, like you have to know, like when you're thinking about your parents, for example, when I think about my mom, whenever my mom would call me, when my mom would try to spend the side of me to talk about, uh, Jesus, when she tried to spin that side of me around, I had to spin it back around because I knew that we weren't in agreement. And I knew that she wasn't looking for me to tell her. She wasn't looking to be educated. It was just that she felt like she had some revelation. She felt like she had some insight or what have you. And she would ask a question to ignite a conversation, but the conversation always turned into an argument. And so I had to get wisdom in that. And I had to say, I, I, I go talk to your pastor, mom. Mm, nope, we're not doing that. We're not doing it. And she's like, what? What are you talking about? I just, I'm just asking a question. I'm just asking a question. And I'm like, we're not going there. And the few times that I did fail the test, the few times where I just like, okay, I'll tell you what. Okay, this is what the Bible says. Well, I don't agree. I'm like, mom, it's in the Bible. But, you know, and my mom, well, she would just go through all these different mediums. And then finally she would say, well, you know, man wrote the Bible. And I'm like, here we go. Mom, you got to trust Holy Spirit that he got that Bible to us clean and all that. So, yeah, but and I'm just like, why do we even have these conversations? So just remember that, that whenever you come in contact with people, whenever there is an area that they're not in agreement with you in and they don't want to come into agreement with you in, if you fight in that area, Whenever they try to spin you around, don't spin. You got this is where you have to be unyielding, unmovable, unshakable, always abounding in Christ. You got to stand there. And when they try to spin that area of you around, like for example, if you know you don't believe in fornication and you know that that's what the words say, and you promoting uh, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, you're promoting that. And they try to spin that area of you around and say, So, girl. How about I was with um, such and such last night? I don't want to talk about that. What am I doing? I'm saying I don't want to talk about. It. See, that's what I'm saying. Y'all, y'all, they'll have you. The church will have you abstinent and you ain't got no man. I'll talk to you later. You saw that? Did you see how I did that? What I'm doing is. The person, the Bible says it this way. Don't cast your pearls or swine. She doesn't want the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. She's bound. She doesn't want tr the truth. She wants company in her bondage. She, she doesn't want the truth. She wants company in her bondage. So in that, I have to make a decision. Do I want to get into a, fry, a pride 
infested conversation and possibly end up being uh, snatched by Leviathan himself. Do I want to go into this conversation like, okay, uh, uh-uh, and I'm, 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 I'm opening the descriptions and stuff, or do I just want to go ahead and say, sis, when you want the truth, I'm willing to have a conversation with you about it. I will show you scriptures, but one thing I'm not going to do is argue with you. So one of the things I'm going to ask you is not to ignite a conversation to start an argument because you're not going to change my mind. Period. Point blank. Period. Point blank. All right. So how do you test the spirit? You must grow and mature in the fruits of the spirit. This is where we have to kind of deviate and go into the scriptures, but you have to grow. So first and foremost, you have to create a standard. We can say it this way. You have to create a standard or better yet, you have to become the standard. The Bible says it this way. Remove the speck or the moat or the plank from your own eye first. So that means that I can't test a spirit without me first growing to the height. So if I'm sitting up here and one of the fruits of the spirit is gentleness, for example, it's hard for me to see that another person isn't gentle. If I'm rough around the edges, right? If I'm rough, if I'm sitting up here and I'm hardcore and I'm mean and all that other stuff, I can't test the spirit in another person because I relate to it, right? Amos 3, 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? So I have to grow the fruit of, of gentleness. That means that it has to grow. It has to grow out of the season of bitterness. It has to grow into full maturity. It has to become sweet. And when it becomes sweet, it becomes edible. That means that people can come and they can benefit from it. So now I can share that gentleness with other people because I am a tree. Remember, I want you to write this down. I am a tree. You are a tree. So now people can benefit from that because now I'm demonstrating that particular fruit. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to grow to the height. You got to start producing fruit in that area because it is it's it's. It's hypocritical for you to try to test the fruit, girl. I think, I think, I I think that she, you know, you know, she slept with him and they weren't even married. She was sleeping with him. Okay, that's fine. I get that part. But what about you? You have to grow fruit. Girl, I ain't sleeping with nobody. Where your hands been? See that, Tiffany? You all, I'm, I'm saying. I'm not saying that what she did was wrong. I'm saying that right now what you're doing is engaging in gossip because you have not grown in that area. Now, if you're sitting here and you're telling me that because maybe I want to put her in a position of power or something like that, then okay. But if you're just talking and you you have not grown in that area, then one, not, it's not only is hip, hypocritical, but it's gossip. It also means that I have to look at your motives. So you must grow and mature in the fruits of the spirit in your life. That's number one. And I said, you got, let's go and look. Let's go and look. It's the fruits of the spirit. And we're going to go pull it up. We're going to pull it up. It's Galatians 5.22. I am sure. I am sure. I am sure. Give me a second. And we're going to talk about each one of the fruits of the spirit, just like we're going to talk about the works of the flesh. Again, we're talking about how to test the spirit. I'm going to give you real in. I'm talking about Bible instruction, um, real insight into how to test the spirit. All right. Yes. Galatians 522. Let me find where we are, where we are. Okay. Galatians 522. So now you, uh, you got to know the difference between the works of the flesh versus the fruit of the spirit. So we're going to start at Galatians 5, 16. So you got to be able to differentiate the works of the flesh. Um, And so first you have to eradicate the works of the flesh from your life. Now it's not to say that you're going to be perfect, but those fruits have to be uh, minuscule in your life. You have to bring them down and you have to grow the fruit of the spirit in your life. The fruit of the spirit needs to be sweet in your life. All right. This I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. That means you can't do what you want. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. So this is what you want to eradicate in your life. This is what you want to eradicate. This is what you want to look for in your own life before you look for them in another person's life. Now you want to look for these in another person's life as well. But first you want to make sure that you don't have these manifesting or materializing themselves in your life. Okay, number one, uh, adultery, and these are the fruits, these are the works of the flesh. 
And you can also say the work, the fruits of the flesh, but works of the flesh. Adultery. Are you messing with somebody's man or somebody's woman? I don't care if he say, I'm going through a divorce. I don't care if she say, I'm going through a divorce. If they're married, you have the spirit of adultery. If you're, an engage, if you're engaging in a relationship, I don't care if they've been separated for the last 25 years. If they're not divorced, they're still married and your relationship with them is illegal. And that has to be heard because we have a way of, of lying to, our, to ourselves. Well, Tiffany, you know, his wife, uh, his wife cheated on him and she left him for another man. And, you know, they've been separated for the last seven years and uh, he's living uh, by himself and the wife is she living with her man he's still married period point blank he's still married to her so he has to address that in the courts of heaven that's something that they got to go and they got to go through the they got to go through the the thing go through the divorce and do whatever they need to do before he becomes legal but if you touch him then you are outside the will of god adultery fornication fornication Okay, we're not going to stay there. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. It means absence, absent of holiness. That means absent of holiness. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness means to indulge the flesh. It means to indulge your sensuality. It can deal with sexual sin, gluttony. It just, it means to indulge the flesh. It can deal with alcohol, idolatry witchcraft hatred variance immolations wrath strife seditions heresies envyings murder drunkenness revelings these are the works of the flesh they are supposed to be minor in your life sister angelina god bless you thank you sis they're supposed to be minor in your life. You want to kill them. I'm going to read them again. I wrote them down. Adultery. You need to make sure that that is not materializing itself in your life. Like I said, you got to you got to deal with this in your own eye um, before you reach into somebody else's eye and try to pull it out. Before you try to cast the demon out of somebody else, you got to get through your own deliverance. Adultery. Fornication. Got to get rid of it. Uncleanness, which is impurity unholiness that means to be outside of holy holiness remember the bible says be ye holy for i am holy lasciviousness means unbridled sensuality excess unbridled sensuality excess it's like sitting at the table and pigging out if you're sitting at the or you, you always you just got to keep on indulging the flesh idolatry we know that there are many forms of idolatry um my idolatry can materialize you putting yourself ahead of god anytime Anything that you put ahead of God is idolatry or it, it represents idolatry. That means if you're in sin, you are in idolatry because you are placing yourself. You're, and I'm talking about continuous sin. I'm talking about rebellion. I'm talking about iniquitous behavior. If you, let's say, if you keep sleeping with somebody, you're in sin. That means idolatry. And the reason that you're in idolatry is because you worship yourself. You worship your opinion. You worship your preference. And the reason that that is, is because you have not tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And the way that you do that is by studying your Bible. Uh, it's by fasting. It's spending time with God, getting and showing up at church. You have to pull your flesh and you have to crucify your flesh. You got to pull your flesh down and put it under submission to the word of God. Idolatry, witchcraft. Now, the Bible tells us this is a work of the flesh. It's also spiritual. So let you know. It's a work of the flesh. Witchcraft simply means to utilize the power that God has given you, the abilities that God has given you to do something outside of God's will, especially when you're utilizing it to bring another person under your influence. I posted up to my page, for example, I posted up to my Facebook page about how fornication is a form of witchcraft, because what you're doing is you're robbing a person of their 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 uh, their sobriety, their ability to test the spirit in you. And um, I ended up having, it was funny, I always get people, I won't say always, I get this occasionally, this happened on this channel one time and it happened on my page, uh, where you have a group of people that will start coming and they'll, you know, try to do something. So when I first, I had this, when I did a, a message on witchcraft one time, I, I did a, a lesson on witchcraft on here, I had a bunch of witches that logged in. And this is why I started having moderators for my channel. I had a bunch of witches that logged in um, and you can tell they had some type of 
meeting or what have you and they logged in and they were harassing in the comments they were harassing the people that commented or what have you and you know it, it was exciting and frustrating at the same time frustrating because i don't like when they're messing with people and they were distracting the live um exciting because that lets me know that i made hell mad and i always say this if the devil's not uh mad at you he must be proud of you see i need him to be mad at me because that lets me know that i'm doing something good uh but i had something similar to that um it happened on my facebook page where I posted up that that was like witchcraft, you know, um, sex outside of marriage is a form of witchcraft. And boy, boy, boo, this, this group of people, this group of people, um, they weren't on my page. They're not on my page or what have you. You can tell it likely got shared in a group or what have you. And, you know, they decided, okay, well, we're going to come and we're going to say something. So this group of people come to my status. I happen to look at the status or what have you. The status, you know, got a lot of shares and likes or what have you. I happen to look at the status and it was a serious status and it had a whole lot of you know, I had like 30 something laughing icons and I'm just sitting there. Sister Sandra, God bless you. Thank you, sis. You're awesome. But I saw a bunch of laughing icons or what have you. And then some of them had even taken to going to the comment, hitting like the laugh button besides a lot of the people that commented because people like, you know, putting the fire icon up there um, saying, amen, I need help. And they were just, you know, trying to harass and bully people. But what I did was I went and blocked them. See, the thing about it is witchcraft is a work of the flesh first, but then you're going to get into, um, you get into the spiritual aspect. Those people had nine times out of 10 got into the spiritual aspect. When you get into the spiritual aspect, this is when you begin to create covens. And when I say covens, understand that covens are not necessarily just physical building. Um, covens deal with co covenants, but it deals with a lot of times when you begin to congregate with other witches, when you begin to congregate with other people who are filled with witchcraft, who are filled with witchcraft. But witchcraft, you want to look for that. And that is rebellion. Rebellion is as a sign of witchcraft. When you come across somebody, they say, girl, I don't care what that. I don't listen to the church no more about that kind of stuff. They be telling you, girl, uh-uh. I busted up for my man. And look at him. Look at him. I got my man. Church will have you out here single. That's witchcraft. That's witchcraft because that person is now promoting. Now, that person is not only just in sin, the person is saying, hey, come sin with me. Come sin with me. So the person is utilizing something. They're saying, hey, look, look at my blessing. Look what I got over here. You see what happened for me? When I stopped listening to this is what happened to me. And dude in the cut scratching his nuts. All right. Witchcraft. Number seven, hatred. These are the works of the flesh. Hatred and hatred typically deals with unforgiveness. Um, it deals with you refusing to forgive everybody. And listen, y'all hear me say this all the time because most of the people I get a lot of women that follow the channel, right? So a lot of women follow the channel. Sisters, I need you to hear me. I'm not coming for you when I tell you. Be mindful. I know that you have children with some of these guys, and you know, they they walked out and then they're not supporting their kids and they're not even visiting their kids, but you have sometimes. You may have to pray and ask the Lord to help you to forgive them, that guy every single day. Do not get into the realm of hatred. Do not get into the realm of hatred. This is why God, you just say, Lord, as far as this child support, what should I do? God, in many cases, will tell you, let it go because he doesn't want you in the realm of hatred. This is all about your soul and it's all about that other person's soul. He doesn't want you in the realm of hatred. Stop trying to get revenge. Variance. That means to be disagreeable, contentious, strife. And I, I was, I was, I did a message when I got home from church because I posted up a message earlier. Um, and I was really just dealing with being unequally yoked with unbelievers. And it, it it never ceases to surprise me when you start teaching on relationships. You got so many people who are out here who are full of idolatry, who they are triggered when you start talking about that. And they always feel the need to come out and put in your comment section. Well, I've been with my man for 87 years and we, we did it before we got married and we still together. You know, and I'm just like, listen, that's somebody who has that's disagreeable. That means that even though the word of God is true, they're saying, well, I'm exempt from it. And I think everybody else should be. I just think you, you, you promote it wrong. These are, these are uh, disagreeable people, but I did a, um, I did a, I did a reel and I was dealing with that. Like, hey, stop promoting your sin. Because at the end of the day, it ain't it didn't work for you. I don't care if you're you managed to hold on. If I go get a man 
And I'm, 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 I'm gonna put it out there. I'm gonna put it out there. I'm gonna put it out there plain. If I go get myself a man and I sleep with him outside the will of God, we're not married. I sleep with him. And then I start keep I keep on. I keep we keep doing it. Will he put a ring on my finger? Yes, it happened twice. Matter of fact, it happened more than two times. Two times I just went to the altar. But we will likely get married. That's the way it works. I'm a whole wife over here. But will that marriage work? It could. But there will be sorrow with it. See, God said when he blesses you, he adds no sorrow to it. I would go through. Sorry, guys. Give me a second. I, you, you would think, oh, she's leaving. it. That's an Amazon delivery. You would think I would stop ordering something, right? Okay, Milo, good boy. You, good boy, you paid your rent. You, pay, you paid your rent. She, she, She's pulling out the driveway now, baby. You scared her away. Okay, you did good. Welcome to my channel, guys, where we go through this every Sunday. You know why? Because I can't seem to stay off of Amazon. Matter of fact, I placed some orders while I was at church today. So I can't seem to stand, stay off Amazon. And so consequently, I get a lot of deliveries that come on Sunday. It's like always, they're always saying, we going to deliver your stuff on Sunday. And I saw that the other day when I placed the order. And I, it says Sunday. I said, here we go. All right. I think we clear. I think we're in the clear. Milo, come here. We'll get back in it. Come back. Come here, sweetie. Thank you, Adonis. God bless you, sis. Thank you, sis. Come here. You paid your rent, okay? You did, a good, you did good, okay? You did good. You scared her away. She dropped the package and she ran away, okay? I know. Okay. Where were we? All right, well, let's get back into this. All right, we're going to get back into this. I do apologize. Sincerely, wholeheartedly. I love my baby. I do. I love my baby. All right. Where were we? Variance. That means disagreeable. 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 Those are the people that come onto the channel, for example, and a lot of times they'll kind of They'll, they'll kind of chill in the comments. I'm talking about not even the comments. Most of the time, they'll kind of just sit there and they'll just watch. And, you know, they just sit there and get offended or what have you. They sit there and then they, they wait for you to say something that they feel like they can prove is wrong. And they'll be like, I don't agree. I don't agree. These are the people that call strife or discord or division. All right. Number nine, emulations. Emulations. And that is covetousness. That's ambition. That is desire to be equal or to excel another person. Emulations. It means to covet, to have ambition, to have ungodly ambition, unbridled ambition. It means, and I, I see this now, and I, I gotta say this, in, in, in the coming, the upcoming generations, I, I, I come across a lot of kids, young people, you have to understand that there is there is hierarchy if you ever want to meet make it in this thing called life because this what i'm teaching you right now is going to become more and more foreign right because we're coming to, we come into a disagreeable contentious ambitious generation and that has everything to do because i can't beat the generation up without beating up the generation that raised them but you have a lot of young people who don't want to go through a process and that's dangerous because everybody's trying to rush to the top. Everybody wants to be the next great influencer, the next great this, the next great that. Everybody is competing with each other, fighting with each other, contending with each other, rather than just saying, let me go down. Hear me when I say this. If you want to go up, you got to go down. That means humble yourself, die to yourself, submit yourself to God, surrender yourself, sacrifice whatever he told you to go to sacrifice. If you do that, God will ascend you. 
the more God can trust you, the more he will ascend you. The more God can trust you, the more he will ascend you. Hear me when I say this. If you ascend, you got to hear this without going through the process because you can ascend. You can backbite. You can stab. You can lie, cheat, and you can get up. You can you can ascend. But I'm going to tell you something. You'll get brought down. Your fall would be great. Your fall would be horrific. I, I think immediately R. Kelly, you know, ascended doing, you know, what he wanted to do outside the will of God, got up there. It, it, it's, it's crazy how Satan does his own people. Satan will get them to the top and he will fill their head up with all these lies and let them think that they are untouchable. Like even the Lord himself can't touch them. And then, you know, who brings them down? Y'all want to know who, who, who killed Jezebel? Her own eunuchs. It, it, it's, it's Satan that attacks his own. Her own eunuchs. Here comes Jehu. He says, who's with me? The eunuchs look down at him. He said, toss her out the window. Toss her out the window. That's how any, Satan is. Satan has no, ally, uh, no alliance, no allegiance, no, no loyalty towards people. Not only not even his own demons. I am in the ministry of deliverance and I cast demons out that have begged and said, please don't cast me out. I'm going to get tortured. Please don't cast me out. I'm going to get in trouble because. They, OK, God is love. They are outside of love. So they are in the kingdom of darkness is not just a kingdom of darkness. It's a kingdom of hatred. It needs to be absence, absent of love. Absent of love. So emulations, emulations, you have to take your time and find you. Your authority is locked away in your authenticity. Your authority is locked away in your authenticity. Stop trying to fit in. I, get, I had to give that up. Stop trying to fit in. Be who you are. And when you are your natural self and you boldly are, when you boldly Accept who you are and you are not afraid to be who you are in the presence of people. The people who are called to you will naturally draw to you. The people who don't like you will naturally repel from you. Because no matter how many times they try to spin you around, you're just like, girl, I still don't, I still don't promote fornication. I don't care how. They will repel for you, James 4, 6. Submit yourself, with James 4, 7. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he'll do what? Probably. All right, number 10, wrath. Wrath. Number 11, strike. Those are self-explanatory. Number 12, seditions. Seditions. Number 13, heresies, which is false doctrines and promotion. And then envyings, which is number 14, 15, murders, 16, drunkenness, 17, revelings. Your goal, this is how to test the spirit is to make sure that these fruit you are a garden you are a tree in that garden these are the fruit that should not be growing on your tree these are the fruit that should not be growing on your tree adultery it shouldn't be on your tree fornication it shouldn't be on your tree uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance immolations wrath strife seditions heresies envies murders drunkenness and revelings they should not be on your tree they shouldn't be on your tree now, once you have gotten them off your tree and you've grown the fruit of Holy Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. When you've grown these fruit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I had to make sure I wrote all of them down. When you've grown all nine of these fruit and they are sweet, that means that people come to you looking for them. That is when you can test the spirit in another person. Now, you can sit back and say, well, Tiffany, I still need work in some areas. That's fine. You need to develop those areas. Get yourself a mentor in those areas. Get some books of those, for those areas. Make sure you got a pastor. Make sure you're, you're, you're studying your praying, studying your words, studying scriptures as related to the area so that, so that those fruits can get sweet. Though, but the areas where you're already sweet, those are the areas where you can test people at. So if you are struggling with fornication, you you may be able to identify somebody who is in fornication because you can tell by the way they look. You can tell by, you know, the guy walk up to you, you're like, hey, how you doing? He like, you already know, you know, that what that looks like. But 
in order to um to test the fruit to test the fruit this is what it means uh to test the spirit you have to know the fruits of the spirit and the works of the flesh but first i can't say that enough first 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 you have to grow these fruits in your life now it doesn't mean that you are disqualified from testing the fruits you can only test the fruits or be effective in testing the fruits in the area where you are developing fruit uh, the fruits of the spirit and they are sweet if not what will mess around and happen is if you start walking with somebody and let's say they got witchcraft in them and they always and you can tell you know because they're always trying to get over on somebody i'm talking about it's still in the flesh it's not necessarily that they're creating altars right now but it's still in the flesh which you know it manifests in the flesh is manipulation or rebellion but they sit back and they say girl you don't get a ticket i ain't paying for that ticket no -uh, i'm gonna go in through the back door i'm gonna go in through the back door and you sitting up there like we ain't going through the back door girl, yeah even though you're a christian when you partner with somebody in an area where you have not where you are not developing any fruit or your fruit has not grown yet then what you're going to do is you're going to partner with them to your own destruction. Does that make sense? You got to be very mindful, even as Christians, because, you know, as a Christian, you can be sweet in eight areas. You can have love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance. But you can be missing the fruit of gentleness. You can be missing the fruit of gentleness. Oh, let's just say you got gentleness, gentleness gentleness but you're miss, missing the fruit of temperance which is self-control you're missing so you can find you can be walking around and you may find that you build good christian relationships with people that exemplify all these fruits but you one thing about it is your friendship with such and such even though she christian and she got some good fruits she also lacks self-control so you two will become besties in an area of lack does that make sense because she sit up there and she said girl I'm going to the, the the hookah bar Friday. You smoke hookah too? Okay, yeah, I'm going to go there. I'm going to give me something to drink. Because I'm trying to tell you. Y'all become besties of sin. Y'all become close in the area of sin. Now, you could have connected her in the, with her in the area of love. You could have connected with her in the area of joy peace, long suffering. But this is the thing about sin is that it's very sticky and magnetic. So even though you can go around a Christian as a Christian, the thing about your sinful side is it's going to keep spinning and it's going to pull on that person's sinful side. And then you guys will create a soul tie in that area. You could get around Christians. You could talk and y'all can be talking all good, golly, God, girl, God, I'm telling you right now. But if you haven't gotten delivered from gossip, all of a sudden, when they keep coming around, one day that thing going to spin and y'all going to stick and you're going to be like, you know, she, you know, she dating him, right? You know, she, you know, they said she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. Girl, she went, no, that's why she, 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 she went had an abortion. She went had an abortion. Girl, for me. How her suffer? The area where you're undeveloped, the area where you are, you are broken, the area where you're immature, that is the most magnetic part of you. That is the most magnetic part of you. So you can have good Christian relationships, but that part of you, if that other person has that in them as well, that part of you will keep it'll keep on pulling. So this is why you have to resist temptation. You have to sit there. You got to talk to her about the kingdom. You got to talk to her about all things good and you got to resist temptation. And if you mess around and have a conversation that you shouldn't have, had, then you have to turn back around and say, hey, sis, that's an area that I've struggled with and I, I've repented. So if I ever say anything about another person to you that is ungodly, rebuke me and I'll do the same for you. You see how that work? Rebuke me and I'll do the same for you. Because what am I what am I doing? I'm saying I'm sticky in this area. This particular area is highly magnetic and it's in you too. And because it's in you too, then every time you come around me, you pull that. You pull that. And so now every time you come around me, you spin me around, I spin you around, and now we walking together. 
Now we're walking together. So that was that. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Where was that? Was I? All right. Number two, and this is how to test the spirit. Be patient. Be patient. I talked about this uh, in the beginning, and I'll say it again because there are a lot of people on here that weren't on here earlier. If a person says to you, because just thinking about the seasons, I'll, I'll go back into that. If you come across an apple tree outside of season, it doesn't, you, you're, not, you're probably not going to know what type of tree it is uh, because it's not bearing fruit in that, that particular season. So if the apple tree had an ability to speak, it could tell you that it was an orange tree. It could tell you that it's a pear tree or what have you. You have to be patient to see what fruit it bears. You will know them by their fruit, not what, what, they, what they say. Well, girl, I met this dude. He told me he's a pear tree. And I'm telling you, girl, I am smitten already. I don't know. I don't know what it is about this man. I don't know what it is, but it's something special about him. It's something, girl. It's just. Oh, you got to be patient. You got to be patient. Now, one of the ways that you have to be patient, and I want you to make sure you write this down. Avoid love bombing. Avoid it. Love bombing is an attack against your soul. But it's one of those type of attacks that feel really good. If it, it feels heavy good. Been there before. It feels amazing, right? So if I'm getting to know a man, I'm not interested in him telling me, you are so pretty to me. You know, when I looked at you, I was thinking about, man, you got some real kissable lips. Like I, I think about that and I, man, you talking about how many kids you want? <laughs> Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I look like I look like I'm gonna be a busy man then. <laughs> That's love bombing. It causes you to create a future with a person or to produce a future in your mind. It creates this garden, and you don't even know if this person is called to your future. Whenever you do that, you will stop. Anytime you get into that, you will stop testing the spirit because right then and there, you build hope, and hope deferred makes the heart sick. You want revelation? A sick heart is what you call being in love. What Americans call and what Westerners call. Girl, that man made me want to snatch these lashes off. I'm telling you right now, I'm trying my best. Wait till marriage. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I, I wanted to take him. I just want to throw him down. I just, I, I just, I just, I just want to throw him down and do. I just want, I just want to disrespect his body, girl. I just, I just want to have my fun with him. And we do that and get up and repent. If love doesn't exist anymore, then God doesn't exist because God is love. So that's a lie. Be patient. Be patient. That means if I'm talking to him and he says, you know what I like about you, Tiffany? What? I like your personality. All these things are good. But this should be the entirety of our conversation. He shouldn't love bomb me the entirety of our conversation. Our conversation should be him getting to know who I am. I am a spirit inside of this body. I am not this body that you see. I am a spirit. You are a spirit inside of a body. You have character and your character produces characteristics. So what I'm supposed to be doing is looking at his character, testing the spirit, seeing his, his issues, his strengths, his weaknesses, all of those things. But you can't get, you can't get that from one. You can't get that if you love bombing each other. You can't, you're not going to get that if, you, if you're too busy talking and saying um so what did you do today thinking about you what were you thinking about i want to run my fingers through your hair wow so you want to run through your my your fingers through my hair and then what girl don't you make me say no you see that there's no substance to that relationship so what's happening is what we gonna mess around and do? All we doing is getting each other high. When there's no substance, you get high because there's nothing to ground you. Did you catch that? You float up like an air balloon. You you float up like a balloon on the Fourth of July. There's nothing to ground you. 
substance is your anchor. It's what anchors you in a relationship. That means, dude, I want to know you as a person. What do you like? What, what don't you like? Where do you like to go for a living? Are you bitter? Have you healed? What happened in your last relationship? Why you haven't taken accountability? What, what's going on with you? You have to take the time to get to know the person. Take the time to get to know the person rather than allowing that person to sit up there and I, I would love to play music for you, but, they, but have rather than allowing that person to have people Bryson playing in the background. See, when you're young, you, you like that kind of stuff. Having people Bryson in the background or Jodeci. I remember being a young girl and the guy calling me with Jodeci in the background. I remember the dude, I remember the dude could sing really well. And he was like, I'm going to serenade you. I was like, what? And yet that voice, you know, ladies, you know that, that that's the baby maker. There are different types of dudes. This is the baby maker. The one that had that real low voice. He said, I'm gonna, I want to sing to you. I'm like, you want to do it? He said, I'm going to sing to you, Tiffany. I'm like, okay, sing to me. And bro started breaking out with that Jodeci. And um, he started singing, come and talk to me. I didn't even know I wanted kids at that time. I was like, okay. Yeah. He, Tiffany. Suddenly, I think I want kids. Suddenly, you still there? Mm, hello? Yeah. How many kids you want? 20? You. 20. Yeah, with you. You keep singing like that. I ain't never thought. You keep singing like that. You keep singing like that. I started, I'm like, I got to avoid this boy calls. Because after he finished singing, he's sitting up on the phone like, you there? Do you think, do you think I win? I'm, I'm still here. I had a whole football team. I'm telling you, every last one, they're going to be serenading. They, they need to be in their room. Y'all sing so you don't hear me and dad, what daddy and my, mommy about to do. Y'all need to sing. Just go on up. Y'all can be the, just sing. Sing it. <clears throat> That's how y'all got made anyhow. Daddy kept singing to me. <laughs> but be patient. Be patient. And avoid love bombing. If he can sing, don't let him sing to you. It's okay. If he sing, if he gonna sing something, maybe a gospel song. Okay, sing sing gospel. Don't don't let him sing. Don't let him go into that Barry White. Uh, don't let him go into stuff like that because that kind of stuff. It don't 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 don't. I love y'all. I love y'all. All right, be patient. Again, I gotta stay here for a second, and I'm gonna move on. Don't uh, don't get into love bombing. Make sure you're building substance. One of the things that you'll find when you begin to create substance with a person, y'all want to hear something. You want to hear the truth. And I, I dare you to test this. For those of you who are, who, are, who are dating right now, I dare you to test this. If you're talking to somebody right now, I dare you to test this. Stop the love bombing and make the person talk to you. I'm talking about your straight up substance. One of the things that you're going to notice when you do that, James 4, 7 will come into play. Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That person will not take your calls as much. If they're not right for you, they're not going to take your calls. They're not going to want to talk to you as much. They're not accustomed to those type of conversations. In other words, they could be relatively full of crap. And they know that a turd is going to fly out of their mouth. And so because of that, they don't know how to have those type of conversations. They only know how to have conversations where they're sitting up and you're talking and, you know, they're like, so... Girl, what you doing to me? I don't know. You tell me. You got me over here laid out in this bed. I, I can't stop thinking about you. I was thinking about you at work today. I was thinking about you. Girl, you know, I'm not to tell you anything about what I want to do to you. Those relationships don't work. They don't work. They You get high off of a person's words. That's what witchcraft is. What you do is it, it blows you up. It blows up your mind. You get high. And then what we call that high is in love. That's all, that's all being in love is. It's just your high as a kite. Your high of words. 
So I got to break that southern accent out on you a little bit deeper. But you, you high as a kite, darling. And at some point, you got to sober up. And what you were supposed to do, the, the person you were supposed to get to know, when you begin to sober up, you're going to find out that you don't like him. And you'll find out that he don't like you. And because both of you are love or lust addicts, he going to go out there and get somebody else high. Because he don't like the sober you. The sober you asks too many questions. The sober you want to actually spend time with him and get to know him. And all his thanking glory. Okay? The sober you is sitting there saying, hey, this ain't right. No, he liked the version of you that, that love bombed him. That's he love bombed you. You want to hear true? There you go. There you go. He doesn't want that part of you. So this is why you date soberly. You date soberly. You get to know a person soberly. And like I said, I dare you to test it. I dare you. I dare you to test it. I dare you to test it. When I come on my next video, I want you to post up. When I do my next video, next week or two, I want you to post up 55. Tiffany, you were telling the truth. Write that down. 55. Just have, hold a conversation. Take the love bombing out. Cut that stuff out. Hey, I don't, I appreciate the nice things that you say to me. And I appreciate the whole Tevin Campbell, Peebo Bryson, all of that stuff in the background and stuff like that. But I'm not looking to get wet. I'm looking to get to know you. So at this moment, I don't believe in sex outside of marriage. Obviously, you know that. Let's just talk. Let me get to know you better and begin to ask questions. Write down like 20 questions you want to ask him. Ask questions or you want to ask her. Ask questions. Talk. Go into the deep. Watch. That person will run because they don't know how to have that type of relationship. You're dealing with a lust head. You're dealing with an oxytocin moron or an oxytocin idiot. I don't like to say that. An oxytocin addict. That's what I meant to say. An oxytocin addict. This person is accustomed to this is why they got a string of failed relationships. They got a string of failed relationship because they love going on cloud nine with no substance. They love wrapping their arms around a person, staring deeply into their eyes and saying, I love you. They love that. They love planting a person down on the bed and, and trying to conceive a child. They love that. But they hate the sobering moment when they hold their child. They hate the sobering moment when their responsibility walks into the room and says, hey, you need to work. You need to provide for this child. The wife that you have or your girl, she, she, she needs to go to the doctor. They don't like that. They want, they just want that moment. And this is why they, they exit relationships as soon as responsibility walks in. As soon as responsibility comes and hands them a cup of coffee and says, sober up, cuts the lights on. They don't like that. They just want to be in love. There are people out there that live their life in love. They go from relationship to relationship. And as soon as things start melting down to normality, which is a realm that most relationships live in, they leave. They go find somebody else. They play the victim. You know, my wife, she doesn't let me touch her. Oh, wow. That's, that's horrible. Man of God. What happened? I don't know what happened. I think she was molested as a child. She doesn't like sex. Oh, dang. Is there anything I can do? I just need somebody to talk to. Why did he get a therapist? Sis, that man ain't having problems with his wife. He's an adulterer. You know, I love talking this type of stuff. You know, I love just being open and honest about that. Because hear me when I tell you, there are people on here that need to hear this. It may not be you, but there's somebody in the cut sitting there looking like, I show what that man told me. He, he told you that his wife don't let her touch, don't let him touch her. But did he tell you why? He may be lying. But did he tell you why? Did he tell you why? Did he tell you that, hey, he's probably been out there thotting around. And his wife said, hey, before I can let you touch me again, before I can forgive and let go of this whole thing, I need you to go get a test. Did he tell you that? He's not telling you the entire, entirety of the story. And sometimes, you know, when you're when you're a desperate woman, and I called it out when you're desperate. What ends up happening is you have to learn the hard way. You have to learn by putting your feet in her shoes. And when you put your feet in her shoes, that's when you're able to relate to her. 
and you stop hating her and then all of a sudden you're trying to find her on social media but baby girl then got away from him and she running out in the field frolicking and just throwing that hair all over the place ah! she having a good time while you stuck with old boy and you out there trying to chase chase her because you want to have a conversation hey uh, I know I was kind of rude to you and I, I'm sorry for taking your man. Um, is he normal? Girl, listen, y'all make a perfect couple. Stop, ma'am. I get it. Okay. He hit me upside the head with an iron. Thankfully, it wasn't plugged in. But <laughs> is he normal? He, he's perfect. Stop. Stop lying to me. Is he normal? Cause I'm trying to get away from. Listen, if you get away from me, you gonna start looking at me, okay? I don't want him trying to come back to me. I got away. I am out here in these streets having a good time. I have my life back. I got my peace back. I got my joy back. But okay, God, I gotta go and tell the truth. He crazy. He 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 crazy. He he uh, he 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 three shades of crazy. I'm sorry. Mm -mm. He, he ain't a normal man. I once caught him uh, downstairs masturbating in nursery rhymes. Crazy. Yep, he, he good and crazy. He be on uh, porn sites. I'm talking about male porn sites. I'm just, I just walk up in the room. I didn't even say anything anymore. I just I left him in there like that. One day I came in the living room. He passed out drunk on the floor. Just butt naked, passed out, drunk on the floor. Got the laptop in front of him, and there's some male porn still playing. I just stepped over. I just stepped over. I poured out a little liquor for my homies on top of his head, and I kept going. I'm just, I don't even care no more. I, I, I mm -mm. no man. He got so bad the bro man starts seeing stuff. He starts seeing stuff, you know. I just, I told him one day that yeah. You know, I was going to the store. I just didn't come. I didn't go back home. I was, I was going to go get some milk. I didn't go back. I knew he was in a relationship. You know, he was messing around with you. That was my way of escape. The Lord said he will give you a way of escape. And I want to just say thank you so much, girl, for taking him off my hand. Oh, don't run. <laughs> don't run. Don't leave him, please. Don't leave. Be patient. This is what you want to do. You want to see if he's crazy. You want to see if she's crazy, man, a guy. You want to see what produces itself. You want to see if there's unforgiveness, strife, if the person takes accountability, or what have you. All right, let's jump ahead. Let's go ahead and move on. Number three, don't jump ahead of God. I said just jump ahead. Don't jump ahead of God. Keep your imaginations in check. Keep your imaginations in check. I'm sorry, y'all. It's the writer in me, I'm telling you. <laughs> but... Don't jump ahead of God. Keep your imaginations in check. You know, your imagination, especially as a woman, your imagination want to jump. You know, because we like oxytocin dopamine, period, point blank. We like the feeling of it, right? Um, and we've had we've had our fair share of it before. And we like the way that it feels. We love the way that it feels when somebody tested on our chin. We like that. We like that. We like when a man takes his hand and rubs it through our head. We like that kind of stuff. We like that stuff. And so a lot of times we'll jump ahead of God because we want to hurry up and we want to hijack our next season. We want to hurry up and get to that space where that man is standing in front of us and looking us in the eyes or what have you. Um, so a lot of times what we do is we just start moving ahead of God. You've been talking to him two weeks and you already giving him gas money. Oh, I felt that. I tell you, I love you. I love being prophetic because there's somebody on here you like. I'm closing out. Mm -mm, don't go. Don't go. You about to get your deliverance. You don't even know this dude. And you're already creating a dependency. This is one of the things. I didn't write it in my note, but I'm going to make sure I put it right here. Do not create dependencies between you and another person that you don't know. I have gifts, talents, all of those things. I don't get, my friends don't utilize those freely. Any man that comes into my life cannot utilize that freely. Period, point blank. In other words, I ain't so inject into him. Oh, he utilizes that whenever he's married to me. Other than that, no, unless the Lord tells me to so, I ain't sewing nothing. 
you're out here creating dependencies with people because it feels good to play house. This is when you hijack your next season. It feels good to kind of mingle. Let me give you an idea. Let me give you a revelation about soul ties. Soul ties, sometimes there you can create other types of ties, uh, ties outside of soul ties that are they still they are still forms of soul ties. For example, you can create a financial soul tie with a person. Any place you create a dependency, you create hope and you create a dependency. So now you over here, he like, um, yeah, oh, e, I would come see you. What's your cash at? Foolishness. You're creating a standard and you're going to be the first one to complain when you get married. And he's sitting up there like, baby, <laughs> he all feminine. <laughs> Let me give it to you tonight. <laughs> Don't create that. Period, point blank. You get to know the person. You don't create that because sometimes people think they're in love with you and they're in love with your abilities, your gifts. They're in love with what you can do for them. And don't just, and I got to say this to the sisters, don't think that only women can be uh, that looking for sugar daddies. You got dudes out here that be looking for sugar mamas. Dudes out here looking for sugar mamas. We have you financing them if you will. And then some of y'all silly enough to do it. Kara, he's just in a hard season of his life. I get that. When you get to know a person, when you have built a foundation with a person and you've known this person for a while and God is in your relationship and you're accountable and all that, yes, you get into the place where y'all help. There's nothing wrong with helping. I'm saying when you haven't tested the spirit, when you don't know this person, when you're still new, you don't care. And you don't create a dependency with a person because people sometimes think, fall in love with what you can do for them and they confuse that for them being in love with you. They can create this thing where they think that they're in love with you. Women have been doing that for centuries. Girl, he got my hair done. He got my nails done. Girl, he paid my car. No, he did this and he. Oh, girl, yeah. I got, I got to be with him. Being getting married to do, they can't even stand him. And you're like, what happened? I don't love him no more. You never did love him. You love what he could do for you. You love what he could do for you. So the thing about it is, you get to know spirit to spirit. I'm spirit in the body. He's a spirit in the body. You get to know the spirit of the person. And in getting to know the spirit of the person, you see if y'all spirits are can connect. Don't bring all that extra stuff that oh, touch your butt, here's some money, let's go out. Don't do all, all that other stuff. It will have you float in the cloud now. Don't bring all that other stuff in. Take your time. Take your time. Right, sit up there talking about, can you pay? I, mean, uh, I got a, I had a cousin. Uh, I'm gonna get back into this, I had a cousin. I ain't heard from the dude in like 15 years. 15 years, literally. Send me an inbox message. Send me a friend request on Facebook this is some years ago. Then he sends me this inbox message. He said, cuz, I got to go to court tomorrow for child support. And he said, if I don't have uh, $300, they're going to lock me up. And he asked me for the money. And I told him no. I didn't say no because I wasn't going to curse and say I didn't have it because I did have it. I wasn't going to lie. But I'm just like, I went in the bed with that girl. That's your responsibility. I told him no. I said no. I, I, I offered him. I said, you can work. I can give you some, some stuff to do. And you can earn it. He didn't want that. Bro, man, deleted me off Facebook so fast. That's saying it. Deleted my tail off Facebook. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. I want to I want to ask you do you think I care that he deleted me? Waited a, a little while later and then send me a friend request. Joker been in and pending for a friend request for the last 3 4 5 years. Have I forgiven him? Yeah, I would never mad at him. But at the same time, 
what he's showing me is that he ain't somebody I want to fool with. You got to be mindful. You don't create financial soul ties with your family. See, th th this is why you got you to gotta utilize the word no and not curse yourself with it. It's, hey, could you help me? No. I could, but I'm not. Oh, I tell you what, I need. I just need $75. My grass need cutting. If you can get out here with a lawnmower and cut my grass to my satisfaction, you don't have to borrow. I'll pay you. People run like roaches when you give them responsibility. It's testing and tried on my side. I've learned. I can tell, hey, you need this. Okay, I'll tell you what. Do this for me. Do that for me. Do that for me. I ain't gonna, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. Okay. What you did? Don't you do hair? Uh -huh, okay. I, I, I want to get my hair done. Love you too, sis. Want to get my hair done? Come hook me up. You need a hundred bucks. I need this. Right now, currently in my house, I got uh my, my pantry. It's a little overflowing. I kind of overbought some stuff. My pantry, I need to deal with my Upstairs, underneath the in my bathroom, I need to do some organization. I don't feel like doing. It. I I got too much work to do. So if I got a relative that I trust in my house, and they say, I, "Okay, I tell you what, I pay you hundred dollars to come organize this stuff." But can you give me the hundred now? And I come organize. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. No, you got to come do it. You come over here once you're done. I, I you know, it's get to my satisfaction. I'll give you the money. Notice I'm not, you're not having to borrow it from me. I ain't got to chase you down. You're going to find out people don't want responsibility. They just want handouts. They want handouts. Don't jump ahead of God. Keep your imaginations in check. And I want to say this before I move on. Don't imagine him being the one, or brother, don't imagine her being the one. Don't imagine marriage and children living with this person, laughing with the person. That kind of stuff will set you up to it's hard to let a person go whenever you do that because you are not in love with the person you're in love with your perception of the person and the future you've built and whatever you spend time in or whatever you invest time in it's going to start creating value when you invest time in imagining a thing when you constantly keep doing that what you're doing is building and over the course of time that building what you build in your mind is going to become invaluable to you so consequently whenever the person is not materialized and a manifest in that whenever the person is not giving you that you're going to argue with the person because now you're going to be operating in the realm of control because you're trying to make them fit into that imagination. Then at the same time, when they begin to walk away, you're panicking and crying and going through all of these different realms of, of torment, not because they were good people. How many of you can be honest? You cried over some really wicked, broken folk. But you know why you were crying over them? It wasn't that you were in love with them. You cried and you grieved your fantasy of them. That's what you were grieving. You, I mean, how many dead people on here right now? I can tell you right now. I can tell you right now. You sitting up here, you're probably grieving a relationship. Bro, man hit you. He wouldn't stop cheating. He mishandled you. He didn't even want to talk to you. He didn't even like the sound of your voice. He didn't want to be around you. And you're grieving him. You're grieving him. And you, it's just confusing because you're like, he treated me like crap, but why am I hurting? You're not hurting because of him. You're hurting because of what you put in here. That's what you're hurting for. See, one of the ways that I learn to sober up from people is I stop, I, I take this and I stop putting these thoughts ahead. Now, I'll say this. That was a time I used to build in my mind and the way God delivered me was he started sobering me up and made me look at the person for where they are. And then he had that, before you build a thing, count the cost. I had to ask, answer the question, do you want to be with this man for the rest of your life? As he is. Look at him. Don't look up what you plan. Look at him. Mm -mm. No. -uh. But now I don't look at a man's potential. I look at where he is here because He's going to lead the household. And if he is not in a good place, he's not going to lead me to a good place. If the blind leads the blind, they will both fall into a ditch. I don't want to make love in a ditch. 
I don't want to make my, my home in a ditch. You have to count the cost, right? Don't jump ahead of God. Because you will fall in love. You will keep building and keep building and keep building. And you will let that person love bomb you because it gives you another brick for that building. But your, your, your building has no foundation. And you'll keep building and you'll keep building and you'll keep on thinking and you'll keep on... I just, and one day you're going to sober up and realize that what you built has no foundation. It's crooked. It's not sound. And you're the only one living there. People will let you build a thing and they'll watch you go move in there and you'll be living with the, the ghost of who you hope they are. You'll be up in that place. Oh my gosh. I just. Why am I so in love with you? Why can't I stop thinking about you? Why? Mm. I want to reward you. I, I just, I just, I've never been with somebody like you before. I'm so, I'm so excited about our relationship. I'm excited about our potential. I'm excited about the potential for little babies with you. Whoa, what are you doing to me? What, what's happening? The whole time you talking to a demon that's looking at you like, I don't know. I'm in love with you too. He don't know what he did. He ain't did Jack. It's all in your head. That's what you're in love with. But one day, you're going to have that hangover. Then you're going to sober up. And you're going to turn over in that bed. Three kids later, and he's going to be looking at you. You ain't going to wake up and give me no breakfast. Why you running? You acting fun again. He's not who I thought he was, God. God, like, oh, you're sober enough to hear me now. I gave him three babies, little king. Mom, <laughs> what did I do? Mom, we ain't got no more cereal. Where's your sister? She's in the room, going in a circle. She don't know where she at anymore. Now you're sober. You know, and this is the crazy thing. This is what destroys relationships because when you sober up, that's when you start counting the cost. <laughs> Three kids. <laughs> oh, oh, he, oh, he will never have me. Oh, he abusive. Oh, oh, he like to drink. Oh, he, oh, he like to hang around the wrong people. He don't even want to work. Oh, I can't do this. I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm gonna call the therapist. I can't do this. Because you jumped ahead of God. You got yourself high as a kite. You let this person love bomb you. You went on cloud nine. And while everybody else watched you float up. He's a man of my dreams. I am bone of his bones and flesh of his flesh. We also have to watch you act crazy. We got to watch you sober up. Uh, okay, I don't know who to talk to, but this is the sobering part. I'm going to get into this again. Um, can I talk to you? I don't know what to talk so we have a fenced in backyard, right? I woke up one night, it was like two, three in the morning. And oh, I couldn't find him. You know, my, my, my husband, I couldn't find him. And um, I looked out the window and you know, he dark, so I couldn't really see him that well. I just saw something moving out there and I was like, it can't be him, so I, I stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I can tell it's not that serious. Stop. Get here. Sit down. 
I know the seriousness of his barks, and that one's not that serious of one. It's just his attention point. But girl, he was in the backyard. So I went, I put my gown on, right? I went to the backyard. And the first thing I noticed that R. Kelly's toilet play was playing. I ain't thinking nothing of it. I just thought he was out there. You know, and he, and he couldn't hear me because the music was so loud. And he has, you know, like he had an earphone and something like that, girl. I went in the backyard and he was molesting himself under a tree. And girl, you should have seen what he did the tree. The tree had a little trunk part, you know, the little, the little hole in the tree. I don't know who to tell that kind of stuff to, because how do you tell somebody your husband was making love to a dead tree? The tree been dead for a while, but I'm starting to think he killed it. You didn't see that? I mean, when we were in a relationship, he used to be into some really weird stuff, but I thought he was just extremely romantic. I mean, I, there was this one time he tried to baptize me in the tub and he was holding my head under the water for too long. And I just, I thought that he just got, he was just really passionate. I don't know what to do. Well, first and foremost, you're going to have to get a therapist for yourself. Don't get marriage counseling, get individual counseling. You got to go work out what you just saw in that backyard. Um, you got to work out what happened to you in that tub. You got to work out all that kind of stuff. You got to get your mind back right. You're going to have to sober up. And then secondly, you're going to have to consider, now it's time to count the costs. Can you be with a man the rest of your life? So let me ask you a question. Do you have any clothes on the backyard? Nothing. No, and I, I ain't tell nobody this, but I came home one day and you don't want people to tell you that kind of stuff. They got to keep looking around. He had on a pair of not, you know, it's weird enough for a man to wear women underwear. He had a pair on his mama underwear on. His mama. I know they heard because she had left him. You know, she stayed at night. And she got a drawer, you know, she got her own dress up in that room that she sleep in. He had her underwear on. Talk about you sleepwalking. I'm just trying, I'm trying to show you what happened. There are people on here, we're laughing or what have you, but there are people on here who got some weird stories. They got some weird stories. They got some weird, they can tell you some weird things, stuff that they've been through. And that's what happens. If you go about it the wrong way, you end up with some strange testimonies. And that's embarrassing because I, I ended up with strange testimonies to the point where I couldn't be around normal people. And just want you can't even tell your testimony a lot of times around normal people. I haven't had the tree incident personally, but I'm just saying people have some crazy stories because of the stuff that they do. They end up with some strange testimonies. How many of you, by show of hands, got some strange testimonies that you wouldn't dead? You you probably would show you probably wouldn't. Have. Just by, you got some strange testimonies that you just you you know you couldn't go to a church meeting. People would be talking about some. The Lord delivered me from masturbation. You just looking like that is so cute. Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. What happened, girl? I got a head gig. That's it. Thank you, thank you for the honesty. Thank you for the honesty. People that went into sin, went, went into the depths of sin, no, you can come out with some strange testimonies and you really don't want to tell nobody because they will, you be just like, girl, we were in the middle of it and bro man started growling. That, that's not happy to me, guys. I'm just saying, strange testimony, strange testimony. Okay, let's go ahead. Don't jump ahead of God. Keep your imaginations in check. That way you can test the spirit. Don't jump ahead of God. Don't imagine him being the uh, the man of God. Don't imagine him being the prophet of all, the prophet to the nations, the apostolic warrior. Don't imagine his potential. Don't fall in love with his potential or her potential. 
pay attention to right now. Take no thought for tomorrow. But sufficient for today is the trouble thereof. I love your honesty. And to those of you who are young and you don't have strange testimonies, praise the Lord. Trust me, you don't want them. You don't want them. You don't want them. I remember being a young lady, 19 years old, trying to explain something to an assistant manager of mine who was a Christian, God-fearing virgin and realizing that I was a weirdo. She was looking at me like, it was nothing sexual I told her, but I was telling her a story about some crazy person that was in my life or what have you. She was looking at me like, and that's when I realized your story is not normal. Would I marry a virgin guy personally? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I don't see why not. If he, if he a man, he got a ting ting. Not a ting ting, but a, yeah. If he good guy, if God approves this for my life, yes, yes, of course. Okay, don't jump ahead of God. Keep your imagination in check. And this is how to test the spirit. Number five, submit to God. Submit to God. The Bible says that this way, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That means to surrender your will to God. Surrender your plans to God. Do what God told you to do and not what you want to do. Do what God told you to do and not what you want to do. Surrender to God. Submit to God. Number six, consecrate. Consecrate. Mind your company. That means pull yourself apart. Don't let you, you got to take a get the music out your ear. Pull yourself away from double minded folks. And remember, I told you earlier, people spin around. Your, your sinful side is the most magnetic side of you. People will tend to spin it around. Sometimes you got to consecrate. You got to pull away from everything and everyone um, just so that you can sanctify or what have you so that you can go through a process um, of God, you know, delivering you from a lot of uh, mindsets, or what have you. Um, but consecrate 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 and what that does is it's very similar to fasting uh yesterday ended a 21 day fast that i was on and uh, i'm thinking about going back into another 21 day fast because i i like the benefits of it uh the, the greatest benefit is just you know the clarity and being close to god uh but one thing about it is the one of the reasons i didn't want to end the fast too is i started thinking about you know what i love is the self-control that the fast brings right i don't want to go back to the, the the mindset i don't want to go back to you know pulling up at somebody's restaurant uh, i don't want to go back to that kind of stuff i want to this is a lifestyle for me and so you know for me i was thinking yesterday i was talking to the lord i was like yeah i think i'm gonna, come, I'm gonna, think I'm gonna do 21 more days up in there oh well i think i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do 21 my, 21 more days because i really want the benefits of it um so i'm saying that to say when when you're dealing with consecration um the goal is to create a lifestyle like it's to create a lifestyle of worship. It's to create a lifestyle of sanctification. Um, so you have to pull yourself away strategically so that you can consecrate, get that stuff out of your system so that you can lose your appetite for it. You can lose your appetite for it. I've lost my appetite for a lot of the things that I was eating before the fast, but it doesn't mean I can't go pick it back up. Like if I go pull up at McDonald's today and I go get me a Big Mac combo, trust me, tomorrow I'm going to have a taste for a Big Mac. So in order to control that, in order for me to fight that, I sit back and say, okay, I think I need to do 21 more days of a fast. But the same thing when it comes to consecration. Sometimes you have to sit back and consecrate yourself away from or pull yourself away from listening to certain types of music. Um, you you want to pull yourself away from certain types of people, um, watching certain things on the television set. And then whenever you try to go back, you're going to see the profanity and the profaneness of all that stuff. And you will find that you don't have an appetite for it. And you will find that, hey, I need to consecrate a little bit more. And then over the course of time, it becomes a lifestyle. That is my goal when it comes to fasting is that um, and I, I was doing a 21 day Daniel fast. Let me um, mention that. But my goal as it relates to fasting is I, you know, I want to break those old habits of mine. I really do. I want to break those old habits. All right. Mind your company. Number six is consecrate, mind your company. And then number seven is go, go through deliverance. It's easy to test the spirit when you yourself are free because demons are attracted to demons. That re Realistically speaking, demons are attracted to demons. Again, Matthew 7, 15 said you will know them by the fruit. And there's another scripture that I want to bring to you guys before we close. Uh, another way to test the spirit. Um, and this is especially true for those of us that are in church. You know, those of us who, you know, who claim to be Christian, what have you. Look for the fruit of love. Look for the fruit of love. Now, let's see here. We're going to go to 1 John 4.20. Do I have it pulled up? Nope. 1 John 4.20. Let's go here. 
real quick, like First John 4, 20. Okay, we'll start at 4.18. 1 John 4.18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now, first and foremost, any party tries to bring you under the spirit of fear, that is not a person that loves you. That is a person that you want to get away from, even though this is not a part of my notes. I do feel the need to stop here and say this. Like if somebody threatens you with their absence, one of the things that I have, and anybody will tell you that knows me, if anybody puts me on punishment, I will put myself there. I will pull myself out of your life quick, fast, and in a hurry. I don't like people trying to control me with their absence. I don't like that kind of stuff. I'm, I am a person. I believe in healthy communication. I like being able to communicate with a person. That is the that for me. I love it. I think it, it exudes love. I think communication is my love language. Like I love being able to communicate with a person because I think it clears it clears everything up. Uh, a lot of the lies that the enemy will tell you, it clears it up. Like somebody walking around with a bunch of negative thoughts about you, you're able, it gives you a voice to say, hey, that's not me. No, this is what I did. This was my intention or what have you. But if I come in contact with a person and I come in contact with female friends like that, and they will tell you, I, they will all tell you, I have cut their tails off since then. I'm cool. We good. But I don't fool with them like that because the minute you put me on punishment by cutting me off, I'm done with you, period. Because I don't, I don't, I don't understand the type of, I don't understand it. That's control. And I don't like people trying to control me. I don't like people trying to control me. For me, it's as simple as let's talk about it. That right there shows me that you care about me. That shows me that you, you value my presence in your life and you don't want anything to come between that presence. So you're, you, you made it up in your mind. Let me talk to you. That right there is beautiful with my friends and what have you. It's beautiful. If I got friends that if they think I'm frustrated, they'll call me. They say, you good. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Because <laughs> they know I, I don't put people on punishment. I don't believe in that. I would I tell them straight out. I'd be like, girl, girl, you know what? You about to get the boo because I, I don't like that stuff. And they'd be like, what are you talking about now? You know, and we'll laugh about it. I'm like, you, you got to stop doing that. You did this and I don't like that. Or what have you. But y'all, y'all want to hear something. Here's the, the beauty of it is. That's communication. That's real love. That stuff is foreign in the United States of America. Because what we what we would rather do is talk about you behind your back. No, I talk directly to the person because I care about the people in my life. I talk directly to the person. Sis, you need to stop doing that. Like, for real. I don't understand the whole concept of keeping it in, bottling it up, allowing it to, to torment you. Because you are afraid to lose the person. If the truth drives the person out of my life, then they weren't supposed to be there. The only thing that's hosting them there is lies. If I tell you the truth and you no longer want to be a part of my life, good riddance. I'm not mad at you. I forgive you, but you got to go over there. You got to go over there. Because the, th the thing about it is, if you have the right people in your life, they don't mind you telling the truth because they love you and they want to be their be the best version of themselves. Not just for you, but for themselves, for their children, for, you know, for the people around them. They want to be, they want you to tell them that, you know, you're a little bit grumpy at times. You need to stop that. They want you to tell them that. The wrong people don't want to hear it because they want, they want to be able to remain abusive without being checked. All right. Where was I? There is no fear in love. This is how you test the spirit. God is love. God is a spirit. You want to make sure if it's not love, it's not of God. There is no fear in love. I shouldn't fear losing you. I shouldn't fear you walking away from me. I shouldn't fear you abandoning me. Right? It's toxic. If I fear that, then there's something wrong. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. That means mature, complete uh, love. That means agape love. Perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, now this is where we were going. If a man say, not just a man, a woman as well, okay? If a man say, I love God, this is how you test the spirit. This is how you test the Christian spirit. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath seen? So, if, if she said, girl, I don't like her, 
you got Christian friends that compete with other folk, with other Christians, they are not. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it plain as day. Evangelism has to hit the church before it can hit the world. If you hate the people in church, if you hate other Christians, but you out there talking to the world, like, I dare to say this, you're probably not saved. I don't know who told you you were saved. You're probably not. You believe, listen, you confess Jesus with your mouth, but you didn't believe him in your heart. That's, salvation is not just saying, it's not a chant. You got to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and that he is the son of God and that he now sits at the right hand of God. If you don't truly believe that, if you question it, if you doubt it, but you only said it, then you're not saved. And I think that this is where the confusion comes in with a lot of Christians that say that because the evidence shows in your inability to love your brothers and sisters. Your inability. You know, um, they say she's sick. We need to pray for her. What? You mean to tell me that, that you got so much hatred in your heart that you can't even pray for somebody? You mean to tell me that you got clicks and you mean to tell me and you want to call that salvation? I tell you, this is why I preach this truth, because it is not the will of God that anyone should die and perish. It is not the will of God that you go to hell. My goal is to make sure that you can save for real. I'm not sitting here to say, well, for you to deny that you're saved. If you believe you're saved, that's fine. But it wouldn't hurt for you to sit there and make that confession and challenge yourself. Do you believe that Jesus raised, is raised? Do you believe he's the son of God? Do you believe that in your heart, not in your intellect? That's why Jesus said, many are going to come before him in that day and they're going to say, then we prophesy in your name. And in your name, then we cast out devils. He's going to say, get away from me for I never knew you. You will know them by their fruit. This is what he's looking for. He's going to be looking at your fruit, not your words. Because people can say stuff from their intellect all the time. But if you believe that Jesus is Lord from your heart and you receive his spirit, his spirit is love. You will love your brethren. But if you're walking around hating people, you're probably not saved. And I got to tell you that so you can get saved for real. Now, I get it. When you are young, you don't have perfect love. You're young in the faith. You're young. You're still competitive. You're still fighting. But after you've been in the body of Christ for a while, that stuff should be dead. If it ain't dead, there's no power to kill it because you haven't surrendered your heart to the most high. That should be this love. You know, you can tell this, you can tell love, and I'm going to give you the fruit too. I'm going to give you the, 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 the scripture about love, but you can tell love because how many of you have been there before? I never heard help her. The way she treated me, the way she mishandled me, the way she did me, the way it is, and then the person come and you still do, you still you do everything you said you weren't gonna do. And there is no anger there, there is no frustration there. You just genuinely love on a person. How many times? You know what? I'm gonna say this is why some of you ran your tail in a cave because you don't like the love that comes out of you. That's love. You need to bring out the cave because the, the world, even a church needs to experience that. You hiding in a cave because you got tired of getting around evil people that came and they did wrong to you. And you said, never again. Then they came back and you still helped them. That's love. It's, it's a challenge. And so you start punishing yourself by keeping yourself in the house because you're trying to starve that aspect of yourself. You're trying to start because you're afraid. If I go out, I'm going to get around these mean people. I'm going to get around these narcissistic people. I'm going to get around these broken people. I'm going to get around these competitive people. And if I get around them, I'm going to end up doing what I said I wasn't going to do. They be sitting up there talking about something. I don't know what I'm going to do about my life, Bill. And you're like, hey, I'm going to write you a check. And you don't like the way that feels. You don't like the way that feels. You got to adjust to that feeling. It's the feeling of love. Your flesh don't like it. Your flesh don't like it. It's the feeling of love. And you got to allow your flesh to experience that time and time again and stop feeling like you're being taken advantage of because the only thing you need to ask Holy Spirit is for the discerning of spirits and to give you wisdom and when to give. You won't be pulled to give every time. I'm not. I'm a giver by nature. I love helping people. But you know what? At the same time, I got the discern. I don't mind saying no. I 
I don't mind saying no. And you have to, you have to get to that place because when, when you're developing in it, when you're immature in it, you don't have the maturity to say no. And so because of that, that's typically when you draw back because you're like, I don't, I'm tired of feeling used. I, I'm tired of feeling taken advantage of. I'm tired of feeling like a fool. Nobody likes to feel like that. Nobody. Nobody likes to feel like that. Nobody likes to feel like a fool. But you have to keep pulling yourself out there and allowing yourself to feel it until you start testing the spirit. Because that's what's going to make you stop. Hear me when I say this. That's what's going to make you stop. Is Every time you come home and you feel like an idiot, at some point you're going to stop. At some point you're going to say, I'm tired of every time that girl don't ever reach out to me until she wants something. I'm, I'm, I'm just over it. I'm, I'm tired of it. She'll never... She don't, she don't care about nothing about my life. No, trust me. At some point in time, you have that conversation with yourself or nothing. That conversation with God, no, you're going to look at her. She's going to come running up. She's going to be like, girl, what's up? You're going to be like, and you're going to have, you're going to rehearse it in your head. You ain't giving her Jack Dilly squat. Girl. And she's going to have a five minute, 20 minute conversation with you. She's going to say, but anyhow, I got a question. So I'm going to this event on Friday and I got this bad outfit, right? But I ain't got no shoes to go with it. And I'm going to be speaking and I, could could you give me some shoes? I'll give you the money back. I, I found the, the perfect pair of shoes. They're like $72 with tax and everything. No, man. Mm-mm. Oh, you're allowed to say no to your kids too. You got to, you got to, because you you got to remember that you're preparing them for the world and the world's going to tell them no. And you, they got to have the strength to, to, to deal with it. Uh, if not, a lot of times when kids get out into the world, a lot of times when people start dealing with like with suicidal tendencies and stuff like that is because those muscles were never stre strengthened in their childhood and they don't know how to handle it. They don't know how to handle it. They got to deal with the disappointment at home of, of hearing the word no um, so that whatever they go out into the world, when they hear it, they're used to it and it doesn't, they don't, it don't break them down. So if anybody says, I love you, but I hate her, they're a liar. If they say, I love the Lord, but girl, mm -mm. she just, mm, I'm telling you, they're a liar. They're not saved. Because you, I don't want to say they're not saved. They could be immature in Christ. But when you get up in Christ and you still walking around here with hatred in your heart, you're probably not saved. I don't care if you got a title. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. If you can be Christian for 25. This is why, you know what? This is what happened to a lot of them older church folk. You know how many people bust hell wide open who thought they were saved? See, if we don't preach the truth, then we keep letting people go to hell. They sat up in a church with a big old church hat on and they were mean as a snake. Mean, chasing folks out the church, just being rude, comp competitive, doing all kinds of e evil stuff. But they had that little Martin Luther King church fan or the church fan with Harry Tubman on it, and they rocked. Hey, Amen. That's right, Pastor. Yeah, the mm. Hey, pass me that. One day, they gave up the ghost and they went before the Lord. And the Lord said, who are you? Oh, uh-uh, God, you must, mm -mm. okay, let me, let me take these lashes off. Thank you, let me take this. I prophesied in your name. In your name, I cast out devils. Get away from me. For I never knew you. We got a porn guy on here, guys. I just put him in, I just blocked him. Get away from me, for I never knew you. Why? Because God looks for himself in you. Who is God? God is love. If God looks for himself, he doesn't see his reflection in you, you're not saved. If he doesn't see love in you, you're not saved. If you're walking around here hurting other Christians, you're not saved. All right. Last one. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Hallelujah. I got that pulled up. NIV. What are the fruits of love? How do we know what? How do we know the difference between love and lust and obsession and all that pretty stuff? 
1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 tells you what to do. It tells you what to look for. It says love is patient. See, we like to use this. We turn it into poetic. You know, am I waiting? I need them to read this, you know. Love is patient. Love is kind of at the funeral. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to read these scriptures for what they are and stop just turning them into poetry. Love is patient. Love is patient. I don't know if I can go a whole year without sex. You know, I can't wait till I'm married to have sex. I can't. He don't love you. Who needed to hear that? Love is patient. The average human, the average person goes to their grave without knowing, without experiencing love from another human. Love is patient. Love is kind. This, the Bible gives you everything you need to know about testing a spirit because demons don't have love. So they're not going to be patient. They're impatient. They're not going to be kind because they don't have God. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not envy. It doesn't compete or compare. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not full of pride. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. We're going to go right back up in there. It always protects, even when you're mad. It always protects always trust, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. That's how you test the spirit. You look for love. I'm going to read this again. Somebody said, I love you. God is love. When a person says, I love you, what they're saying is I have God's heart for you. If they don't have God's heart, they can't have God's heart for you. It's simple. Love is patient. Love is patient. It has to echo because you've heard it for a long time as um, just just poetry. It's been poetic to you, but the Bible's telling you love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. I know she's competitive, but you know, that's just like, no, no, that ain't love. That's not God. It does not boast. It is not prideful. It's not proud. That means that person ain't going to be sitting up there. No, no, I hear what you. Mm, 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 mm. No, that's pride. When somebody loves you, they listen. When somebody loves you, they want to hear what you have to say. When somebody loves you, they want to present themselves before you. When somebody loves you, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. Y'all heard me preach honor on this channel left and right, up and down. It does not dishonor others. You come, you come across a person who practices dishonor, they don't have a heart of love. It, the one that, that should be on a t-shirt. It is not self-seeking. I'm going to stay here for a minute. I'm going to stay here for a minute. I, I don't care. It is not self-seeking. It's not selfish, self-centered, all about me and my feelings and what I want and what I can get from the relationship. It's not self-seeking. That was one of the things that delivered me from some of the people I call friends. I got tired of being, I got tired of saying, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Selfish. Selfish. No. No, I want to say thank you. I'll teach y'all honor soon. It is not self-seeking. Y'all, y'all dealing with these people. They want to be the only one talking on the phone. They want to say what they want to say. They don't want to let you talk. They want to talk whenever they want to talk and not when you want to talk. Selfish. It's all about what they feel. They don't want to talk about this because it makes them upset. True. It's all about them. 
and they will acclimate you to the culture of their selfishness where you're always you're always serving their feelings you're always serving their preferences you're always walking on eggshells to not upset them so do you see any god bless you thank you sis And they, I love me some you, sis. Oh my God. Of course you love me some, you, of course you love me, Negro. Because you're been, I don't have no complaints about you. I don't know why you're complaining. Of course you don't have any complaints about me. Because I'm giving to you. You're, you're benefiting. You're coming up to this fruit tree and you're taking off all this stuff and you're, you're getting all these sweet fruit. And you're having a good time, girl. Like, of course. But child, your fruit is bitter and I can't eat none of that stuff. Or you ain't got no fruit. But you just got to understand, when my season of fruit, girl, I've been knowing you five years, you ain't had no free, sweet fruit yet. So you mean to tell me that you're the only one that is benefiting? My, be mindful of relationships where the only person is benefiting is the other person. Relationships are supposed to be mutual. Both people are supposed to benefit from it. If you get a person and all they keep talking about is what they want, what they prefer, drop them like a bad habit. You ain't married to them, run like a roach when the light comes on. I don't entertain no selfishness. I look for that. And when I see nothing but self, just me, well, I... I want this. I didn't feel like I, oh, I, bro. Thank you, Brother Andre. God bless you. I was like, mm, 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 mm. Because they're giving you a preview into the relationship. They're giving you a preview into your relationship with them will be all about catering to their me, I, selfishness, narcissistic ways. Oh, I just don't feel like this today. I, when you're healthy, you right iPhone. When you're healthy mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you take the time to consider other people. And people who say I a lot typically have mental health issues call me a lie. Oh, they be messed up. They be messed up. The, the most selfish people pay attention. Selfishness is a, is directly uh, correlated with mental illness. Every person I've come in contact with. That is extremely selfish, was not stable. They be walking around li like this. Hey, girl. You see that she crazy as a bat. She ain't normal. You good? You good, girl? Mm-hmm. Anybody see where I park my car? She crazy. She crazy. She look normal. Make her mad. Watch that spirit of rage come out. Be all nice and meek. Hi, how are you? I'm good. <sighs> we'll eat you alive. Make her mad. Make her mad. We'll, we'll give you a personal castration. And he'll raise up from there and be like, crazy as a jackrabbit. All right, let's go back. Crazy as a jackrabbit. Don't be nowhere near healthy. Just look nice and healthy. I tell y'all brothers, y'all better stop looking at hips and lips. You get so caught up and you just be like, hmm, she's look so pretty. Bro, bro, when you come out of that relationship, you don't even know, you, you don't know what, you lost a, 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 your left nut, she wearing your, your, your testicles as earrings, and you sit up over there, and you're like, but she looks so innocent, mm -hmm. love is patient, love is kind, you take her out to the eat, if she mean to the waitress, run. You take her out and you like, um, 
they're like, and she's like, can I get um, water and make it cold, please? Thank you. Let's see if you can see that. You see that? You see that? Run! Because only mentally unstable people think it's cute to be mean to other people. That's not cute at all. Can I get a refill, please? Thank you. That child crazy. That child crazy. That, and when I say crazy, I mean that when you're dealing with the brain, the brain is broken off into territories or the mind is broken off into territories. Forgive this is a little raggedy. The enemy gets little spots. This is a normal mind. The enemy has little spots on it. But this means that the enemy has taken over quite a bit of her mind. A lot of her mind is gone. She cray cray. She's not normal. No normal female feels the need to, to, to harass or, or to, to tear down a waitress or a waiter. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. I, I got to keep going here. It does not envy. It does not envy. So for the, you, those of you who support your best friends, that she's mad because somebody else is doing better than her. And now you mad at the folks that she mad at because she mad they, that they have the nerves to be successful or more successful than her. Don't don't find yourself licking hell with her. Don't find yourself. No, tell her the truth. It is not proud. That means it's not pride for you. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. I can stay there all day. It is not easily angered. It is not easily angered. You ever been around an easily angry per a person that is easily offended? Pure hell. It keeps no record of wrongs. People constantly keep on regret. You remember what you did last week? No, the, the reason I don't do that, uh, you remember that? It keeps no records of wrongs. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil. Girl, that you hear that? You know he's going through a divorce. Oh, girl, I knew it. <laughs> no, you should not be celebrating uh, the failure of somebody's marriage or the failure of a person. You should not be celebrating that at the end of the day. If they did you wrong, forgive them and move on. Love never fails. Well, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always protects, always trust, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So to test the spirit, what you're supposed to do is look for love. And those are the characteristics of love. All right, moderators, I need y'all to start paying these naked, this naked website dudes on here again. And I hope I didn't, oh gosh. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. Let me get him off of here without me getting somebody else off of here. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. In testing the spirit, one of the things that you have to do is, again, write these down because this is going to be a summary of what I just uh, taught. If you haven't been watching this entire, this is a summary. Grow the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. And you can find it in Galatians 5.22. Grow the fruit of the Spirit in your life. They have to become sweet. There are different levels and stages of fruit. Once they become free, uh, sweet, you'll know it because people will start sourcing from it. Uh, so, for example, when it comes to kindness, people will turn to you. Um, when it comes to gentleness, people will, will, people will turn to you. Uh, when it comes to um, temperance, people will turn to you. When people see that, let's say, for example, you have self-control, which is temperance, they will look and they see that that's sweet in your life. They'll turn to you. They'll say, how do you how do you restrain? I've been trying this abstinence thing for a long time. And I, I have, that means that the free, that fruit in your life has grown and it is now sweet. So the goal is to grow the fruit so that people can come and start to source from you. Right. 
Um, so you want to make sure you grow the fruits and you uh, the Holy Spirit, but you also want to make sure, and I think it starts at Galatians 5, 16, that you eradicate the works of the flesh. That means that you want to you want to destroy that garden because as long as that garden is present, it's going to produce fruit in your life. As long as that garden is present, it's going to produce fruit in your life. And I'm going to read them again uh, real quick. I'm not going to expound the worries, but fruits of the flesh or the works of the flesh. These are the things you want to eradicate from your life. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, which means impurity, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings. These are the things that you want to eradicate from your life. So it's always important to write all of these down, right? And then you want to test and say, okay, where am I in the area of adultery? Do I entertain married people? Um, even if you sit up on the phone and talk to a married man, we just friends, you need to eradicate, you need to get rid of that relationship, I mean, especially if that person has expressed interest in you or what have you, and, or if his wife is not aware of that. But adultery, you want to make sure that's gone. Fornication, you want to make sure you're not practicing that. Um, it is a, it's a showmanship of uh, not only immaturity, but it's witchcraft. Um, uncleanness, which means impurity. You want to make sure that you are dealing with that. Lasciviousness, which is unbridled sensuality. You want to make sure you're dealing with that. Um, witchcraft, you want to make sure that's control and manipulation, domination. You want to make sure that those things are not materializing itself in life. In like hatred, variance. Variance means strife, contention. Um, it means to be disagreeable. You know, I don't agree. I don't agree. Um, you want to make sure that that is eradicated from your life. Wrath, you want to make sure that's eradicated. Strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings. You want to make sure that these things are eradicated from your life. So this, you got to understand that you're creating, you have two gardens. And I'm going to give you just a picture of it just so before we go, before we go, before we go, before we go. Okay, I'll give you a picture of it. Just a picture, 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 picture. And I'm not I'm not trying to make this cute, guys, okay? So don't come for me. Don't come for me. Don't come for me. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. All right. Okay, just just a pictured example. It's not the cutest, but it is what it is. Let me make sure that this is all right. This is you, my friend. You gotta gain weight. You gotta eat a little bit more, okay? Um, but this is you. I'm gonna say that this is you. This is the kingdom of darkness. This is the kingdom of God. This is where you plant the fruit or the works of the flesh. This is where you plant the, the fruit or the uh, the spirit, the, the fruits of the spirit. All right. So you got two gardens that you have that you're growing. Every believer has these two gardens. Every believer has sown into both of these gardens. The goal is, and again, this is the kingdom of darkness, is you want to make this into a wasteland. You want this to die. This is what it means to die to yourself. You want this to die. You don't want to be constantly sowing over here because whatever a man sow, that shall he also reap. And that is, I need you to understand that prayer does not eradicate seeds. God can give you mercy. He can give you grace. But whatever a man, whatever a man sow, that shall he also reap. All right. So kingdom of darkness, you got seeds over here. Kingdom of God, you got seeds over here. Now, you want to plant. You want to plant the right seeds. You want to keep planting goodness, kindness, uh, temperance. You want, to, you want to plant all the right seeds over here. You want to grow them. You want to water them. One man plants another waters, but it's God that gives the increase. Uh, you want to keep doing it. So you want to stay in the spirit, right? You, you want to stay in the spirit. You want to do as much in the kingdom, as, but you want to stay from over here. You want to stay from over here. Now, your feelings, your flesh will pull you over here. Your feelings, I got vengeance god said vengeance is not it'll have you going so over there uh being dissatisfied ungodly imaginations casting out imaginations and every high thing 
uh, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring in this captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So if I keep imagining him as my husband, but God ain't giving me confirmation, then what I may end up doing is going over here to sow fornication, to sow things that I'm not supposed to sow because you know what I'm trying to do? Witchcraft, I'm trying to force it to come to pass. I, I want it to come to pass. I'll, I'm tired of waiting. Take, I, I don't want to be, uh, you just be anxious for nothing. I'm anxious. I want, I want it right now. I'm tired of waiting. So then I go over here and I begin to sow the seed. I begin to sow seeds over here in the kingdom of darkness. I begin to sow seeds over here in the kingdom of darkness. Now, what's going to happen? I can go to church. I can go to church on Sunday because I want to break religion from me. I want to, I got to break the spirit of religion. I can go to church on Sunday and I can do the huckabuck. I can dance. I can get up in there. I can take off my wig. Well, I don't have a wig on, but I'm just saying. But if I had a wig, I can snatch a wig off my head. I can run laps around the church. I can <laughs> and I can foul. I can let somebody touch me and I can hit the floor. What is gonna happen to the garden while I'm doing all that? My tears, my praise will water this over here. The good, however, I still have a garden that I haven't dealt with over here, which will produce fruit. Okay, so let me show you how this works. Let me show you how the enemy works. The fruit comes, like I'm, I'm about to shoot a music video. I'm excited about that, right? Oh my gosh, thank you, Lord. Oh, short film, you know, the short film is what? All of that, I'm excited about that. But if I had fruit over here in the kingdom of darkness, the enemy will could cause that to grow up. Or the season can come where the joy that I have, because the fruit that's coming over here is all of a sudden eradicated or dismissed over or, or eclipsed by something over here. Does that make sense? So let's say if I, if I sold the fruit of fornication, all of a sudden, I could find, oh, well, I've been sowing this seed. The next thing you know, let's say the man that I was messing with turned out to be a married man. And I'm sitting there like, I didn't know. Oh, gosh, I didn't know. But it still, it doesn't change the fact that I sowed seed. So now, video shoot, right? We up there, cameras, lights, action, actors and actresses get in place. It's all good. But here comes this man's wife. Which one is Tiffany? Oh, I recognize you. Hmm. Call yourself a woman of God. Now, other people on the set, they do this right here. Let me give this a little buddy. But they do this right here. They start recording. Now, that goes viral. Because even though, thank you, you already know, God bless you, thank you. Even though I sold seeds over here and the video comes out and it looks great, it looks amazing. But harvest time came over there as well. Understand this, harvest time sometimes will come at the same time. Harvest time will sometimes come at the same time. So sometimes you may get, okay, y'all want a perfect example. You want a perfect example. You get your taxes. Huh? You get your taxes. $10,000. Your car, give up the ghost. Your kids, you got to pay bail money for one of your kids. You look up. All these bills have just sat there and sucked that $10,000 up like it didn't exist. You go out there and you put the car in the shop and they like $4,000 to fix it. $4,000 to fix this car. You put it, they fix it. Then it break down again. You got to put another thousand in. You got to get the kids uniforms and the school coming and back in. All this stuff. $10,000. You know why that happens? For those of you, if you ever wanted to know, if you, all, if you ever need a revelation as to know why that happened, you got seeds in two kingdoms. 
or 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 you may have seeds in the kingdom of darkness that supersede in size the seeds that you have in the kingdom of God. You were sowing like crazy in the world. Oh, you did. You were twerking. You did splits. You did the percolator. Oh, you in the world. You did it all. You sin like crazy. You get to the church. You quiet. You don't sow no seeds. You just sitting there. You won't volunteer. You ain't trying to help nobody. You still got seeds over here. And this garden has grown out of control. I'm talking about it's just growing up. But your seeds over here, you got like two seeds in that tiny. Two seeds in that tiny. That's the reason why the enemy a lot of times will wait for you to get a nice little lump sum and then he'll come back and claim it. He'll be like, yep, that belongs to me. Yeah, we were talking. Me and my, my students were talking about the percolator one day. I was laughing. I was like, we we were we were twerking before y'all. The percolator was nothing but a glorified twerk. That's all it was. It was a split with a twerk. We, I'm like, we y'all talk about Megan knees. Okay, this porn dude keep on coming on here, but. You got to make sure that your seeds in the kingdom of God supersede your seeds in the kingdom of darkness. Not only do your seeds need to supersede it, you got to stop sowing into the kingdom of darkness or watering the seed. And also, here, here it is, because the Lord's laying this on my heart. Be mindful. Sister Brick, God bless you. Thank you, sis. But be mindful of the seeds that you sow in another person's life or that you water another person's life. Because sometimes somebody come up to you and that means that you're afraid to tell people the truth. Girl, he ain't really saved, but I like him. Don't tell. The Bible says, whoa. What does the word whoa mean? Let's, let's, get, let's, let's, let's get a deep. Woe unto those who call evil good and good evil. This is one of the reasons why I ain't no hater. I don't celebrate anything that's evil. I'm sorry. If you did it the wrong way, I can't. I ain't. I'm not calling it good. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. All right. I'm constantly blocking this porn dude. He's determined. But anyhow, okay. Let's look. Whoa. God said this. Now this is the Bible says whoa unto them who call good evil and evil good. Because I know it's culture for us to sit up there and be like, she like Carol. I'm pregnant. Oh, you're not married. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. You can say congratulations. But I wouldn't say, girl, that's so good. No, I ain't. No, I ain't because you ain't getting me in trouble. Whoa, great sorrow or distress. Whoa, great sorrow or distress will come upon those who call evil good and good evil. Used to express grief, regret, or distress. Big problems or troubles. Extreme sadness. That's the reason why you may find yourself, you know, your friend girl comes up to you and she says, girl, I really like this guy. You're like, what, what happened? So he came over to my house last night, right? It was like two in the morning and I let him in and girl, I'm trying to tell you, he took me to cloud nine and then back. Oh, I'm so happy, Tiffany. I am so happy with this man. Oh my goodness. And you mess around and say, girl, I'm so happy for you. That is so good. The devil is a lie. No, I won't. No, I won't. Girl, why is this man at your house at two in the morning? What do you mean? What cloud he took you to cloud nine? I'm not gonna say, girl, that's good. I ain't going through wall. I done had enough of it. You do you, you that's your business. Do what the Bible tells you to do. That's what I'm telling you. My, my assignment is to tell you to do what the words say do. If you want to go do otherwise, that's your business. That's between you and the most high God. 
but I'm not going to reap of your foolishness. I ain't going to put my hand up in there. Uh-uh. Girl, I just found out I'm pregnant with triplets. Congratulations. I will tell you that. Congratulations. But what I won't say is, you did so good. Girl, that is so good. Praise the Lord. Oh, wait. And now you, now, and what a daddy. He didn't left, but it's okay. No, I have to call it what it is. Sis, this wasn't the best thing for you to do. You were supposed to surrender yourself to God because now the children got to deal. They may have to deal with rejection because it is. Because their father not going to want to be present. So sow into the right kingdom. And definitely, if somebody sows into the wrong kingdom, don't come into agreement with them. Don't come into agreement with them. Don't support it. No, uh-uh. You do you. You do you. Anyhow, I love you guys. I'm going to get ready to close this. Um, I pray that you guys were blessed by this. And like I said, in summary, you make sure that you go to fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. And that way you're able to test the fruit of the Holy Spirit in other person, people's lives. And also you want to be able to identify uh, the 17 works of the flesh or nine fruits of the spirit and 17 works of the flesh. You want to write them down. You want to be able to readily identify them. And you also want to make sure that you study love. Um, and again, love the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, study love. And this is how you test the spirit. If they say, I love you and they don't have God's spirit, they don't have God's spirit for you or they don't have God's heart for you. Um, so study it. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not boast. It is not puffed up. Study the scriptures as it relates to love. And if you see any of those things, that person doesn't have the ability to love you. I hope this blessed you. I love me some of you. Have an amazing Sunday. And I will be back sometime this week to talk to you. God willing. Love you. Bye bye.